morning, grade threes. What is this, Taboho? Licorice. Licorice. And have you tasted this licorice before? No. Okay, well, if you haven't tasted it before, you are in luck today because you're going to taste it, but not just yet. We first have to work with it. I want group, this group of eight to come and line up in front of me. My lesson touches on fractions and a little bit of measurement and space and shape. I had to use licorice. Don't eat it. What I noticed was their mouths were watering to have that licorice, but I did tell them that they may only have the licorice at the end once the problem has been solved. So it kind of motivated them to carry on working out the problem. Do all of us want that piece of licorice? Yes. Yes, we do. But now what are we going to do for us to have it? We can divide it. Excellent. You can divide it. And I put them in different groups because I wanted variety. Group, how many children are in your group? One. Having the different fractions and variations of each group so that we could compare the end results. So when we're dividing, how are we going to start? Maybe you can measure it before you actually start to do it. Then you'll divide it equally. I think she should say definitely we can measure it. How do you measure it? None too? Yeah, the person that I wrote that I said must write the number of the amount of children in their group on the whiteboard. That person is going to take the ruler and that person is going to measure the extra piece. This is where their problem solving skills came in and kind of find out how they're going to share it equally so that everybody can be happy. A ruler is supposed to be able to measure everything. But in this case, the ruler was not long enough. There's a bit of a problem. When we put the licorice next to the ruler, there's a piece of the licorice sticking out. How many centimeters are on your ruler? How many? How many, Q? 30. There are 30 centimeters on your ruler. But now, if we measure the licorice, we've got a little bit extra. Okay, so now how can we solve that problem? We can take our scissors and cut that little bit off. And then after we cut that little bit off? Eat it. Who's going to eat it then? Because we're supposed to be dividing it equally. Who's going to have that piece? One of the kids actually said that if the ruler isn't long enough, then we're going to have to fold it. Josh? You can fold it in half, then you can fold it in half again. Okay, let's see that. And you fold it till it's um, the amount that's in your group. You fold it till it's the amount that's in your group. Do you think that's right? Do you think that's going to work? I think we all should try that. Let's all try and fold the extra piece, the person that had to write the number. You try and fold it into pieces of the amount that's in your group. When I actually planned this lesson, I didn't expect the children to come up with folding. In this regard, they definitely surprised me. And the licorice was very, very nice to manipulate. Are you confident enough to cut? Yes! I think I must help you before you cut, okay? And I have something here to help you. And if you look nicely on the board, you will see that we are going to deal with what today? Let's have Fractions. That extra piece, we had to divide, but it had to come from one whole piece, isn't it? I had magnets on the board, so the first group was the group with eight members in it, and they had to choose the magnet that had 1 over 8, the denominator being number 8. What is a denominator? It's a divider. That's why we call it the, de the denominator, because it's down there. And their denominator is what? 8. So now I want you to take this to help you. And remember, you can stretch the licorice to cut it into how many equal parts? 8, eight equal parts. So now... With this lesson, I also wanted to expand their vocabulary. 
when it comes to mathematics. So words like denominator. When children see a fraction, for example, a fifth, they look at the denominator and they just expect it to be more because the denominator is a big amount. By doing this lesson, we were able to see that even though the denominator is a big amount, the amount of children in the group ended up with a small piece compared to a group of two people that had two as their denominator and they ended up with a bigger piece. Yes, Josh? Mr. Williams, the folding does help because you can fold it into that amount. So the folding does help. You're so clever. You actually didn't need it at all. So what would you prefer to do? Would you prefer to fold it or do you want to measure it against the magnet that I gave you? You can take the magnet and fold it on the magnet. I think you should try and do that. And then I give you permission to cut. They held it against the licorice and they started cutting with the lines. When it comes to mathematics, they aren't able to use the correct terms. So even though they learn about fractions, they're not able to say that I've now ended up with a fifth. They'd rather say I've ended up with a piece. So my whole aim was to be able to allow them to actually grasp that concept of one fifth and to see it and smell it and taste it. This group of four, Inami, how many do you have? We have one and a quarter. One and a quarter, but I see that there's an extra piece there. There's an extra piece there. I think they got an extra remaining piece. And so now if I gave them two extra pieces, they end up with how much, Denai? It's one hole and two quarters. Excellent. One hole and two quarters. What is another word for two quarters? One hole and a half. Fantastic. One hole and a half. There were still a couple of children that were a little bit one stuck on, on denominator. Okay. And I put it next to, is it bigger than the half or is it smaller, the tenth? Bigger. How small is your piece going to be? Is it going to be small or is it going to be big? If there's more people in your group. The more people in your group, the more smaller pieces there are. Very good. On the worksheet, there were a couple of shapes, a circle, a rectangle, a square. They had to now see that two parts were shaded out of four parts. And they had to now write the actual fraction, the two over four. And um, what I also noticed were the brighter kids would write one over two because two over four is the same as saying one half. That's why it is very important when a worksheet is given, especially when a new concept is introduced, that the teacher walk around and check that the children are doing it correctly, that they fully understand what has been learned. Look at my hand. If there are six and three people get then how many is left over? Three. Three. So what's half of six? Three. And what did you write here? Three over six. So how much is colored in? So what other answer can you put there? We can say that if it's three sixths, because three is half of six, then how much? It's half, isn't it? It's going to be half. So you can also say one half is colored in, because it's three that's colored in and there's three left over. And Even though they answered it differently, we can't really mark them right on one answer because you need to understand that children think differently. And so yeah, yeah. one over eight, so if the answer was one over eight, if they had to write one eighth in a word, that would also be the correct answer. I was very impressed with the children and their answers and their problem solving skills and abilities made me realize that as a teacher you, you shouldn't stop trying to teach children different ways of working things out. I think it's, it's also nice to change your ideas and your styles of teaching and make it interesting for the children because if it's not interesting for the children it's not going to be interesting for you and I think a lesson like today will stick in those children's minds that I don't think they'll ever forget about fractions and what they did today.